I thought I'd record a short video on um, some very important parts of the book of Micah. The book of Micah, it's uh, basically a book that's just addressing the, the sins of Israel and Judah, the northern and southern kingdoms, um, an indictment against Samaria and, of course, Jerusalem for their self-righteousness and their uh, sinfulness and uh, basically abandoning God and not practicing mercy. So the title of this message is Micah and Mercy. Uh, just very brief, I wanna be brief with this uh, examination of mercy in the book of Micah. Uh, I'm gonna read a couple of passages and hopefully this would be a blessing to you as you understand the prophetic utterances that were made in Micah concerning Jesus Christ and where it stemmed from, uh, why God gave the prophecies in the first place. But it gets to the place after God just is lambasting uh, the children of Israel through Micah the prophet and gets to this place where Micah asks the question, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? You remember the place where Jesus says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. So that was one of the things that they were um, all excited about. We're offering up sacrifices. That was big for the self-righteous, their sacrifices. Uh, they, they delighted in burnt offerings. They delighted in uh, sacrifices and in, in drink offerings and peace offerings and all those things. They always loved those things. They cherished them because they believed that those things could forgive sin. And Hebrews challenges that idea, comes against that idea uh, ferociously and and renounces it and says that those people would be worthy of the judgment of God in Hebrews chapter 10, counting the blood of the covenant an unholy thing, chapter 10, uh, down near verse 29. And so that's what they were really doing back here is they were just shunning the righteousness of God. They were judgmental. They sought after people's sins. That's what the Pharisees did. They were always trying to catch people in a fault. You know, they caught the adulterous woman. They want to make sure, let's, let's find out what she's doing so we can bust her and we can stone her. And self-righteous people do that today too. Um, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It abounds, um, you know, and that's why we just got to live a life of love and mercy to, to counter that. The, the, the only way to confront that type of judgment is to counter it with mercy. Okay, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. But when you judge others, you judge yourself for you that judge do the same things, Romans 2, 1. Okay, so he says, is the Lord gonna be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn of, of my, for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? In other words, what shall I do? What, what do I need to do? And he says this, he has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Now watch what he says. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To do justly, what does that mean? Justice, it means fairness. It means you look at all people equally. You see them all as in need of forgiveness, in need of mercy. Okay? That's how you see them as equal playing field. There is no difference, Romans 3, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And without Christ, we, have, we do not have that glory, okay? That's all he's saying there. Do justly. Look at humans with fairness. Don't judge according to outward performance. The Bible says he will not judge by the hearing of his ears or what he sees, but he will judge righteous judgment. That is, he judges based upon what he has done on the cross. That's righteous judgment. That's how he judged the poor of the earth. Judged them. Fair judgment. Justice. Okay? Through the cross. So to do justly, be fair. Don't look at yourself as better than anybody else. Okay? To do justly, to love mercy. Not to just have mercy, but to love mercy. Right, we, we, we're too, too often we pride ourselves, I had mercy on that person. I was merciful, I was gracious. They didn't deserve it, but I grudgingly gave mercy. No, 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 no. <laughs> Forget that spirit. He says to love mercy. So we have to ask ourselves the question, do we love mercy? When we see someone caught up in a fault, do we love mercy? having mercy? Do we crave being merciful? I had a person 
uh, confessed some things to me recently. And they said, do you forgive me? And I'm like, man, well, first of all, they weren't done against me. And uh, so there was really nothing to forgive on my part. But I was like, man, mercy just feels good. Why? Because the person on whom mercy has been given is, and who's truly grateful. That's why Jesus says the one who is forgiven much, what? Loves much. That's what mercy is. It's love. The one who is forgiven much loves much. And so that woman who had been given mercy in Luke chapter seven, she was just, she, she was just overflowing at the feet of Jesus. We need to be at the feet of other people. What can I do to wash you, to cleanse you, to restore you? Okay, we know they're washed from their sins in the blood of Jesus, of course, past, present, future. But what can we do to restore them, to bring them back into that experience of forgiveness, that experience of that Christ has indeed carried their sins, borne their, born their griefs and carried our sorrows, Isaiah 53. What can we do? What, how can we go out of our way to ensure that the children of God have experienced that? You who are spiritual, restore such a one. Bear one another's burdens. Man, when they fall down on their face, we are called to bear their burdens. Jesus bore ours and so we are called to bear theirs. So he says to do justly, to love mercy. Do you love mercy? Just ask the question. Are you chomping at the bit to be merciful to others? Do you wake up and is the first thing you think about in the day is God's had mercy on me, hallelujah. How can I go be merciful to others? How can I do it? In what way? God, open those doors, pray it. God, open doors for me to be merciful. Show me the person who is hurting. Show me the person who is overtaken in a fault. Okay, that's what it says. You who are over, you who are spiritual. People always ask, you know, what, what or wonder what is true spirituality? Okay, what's true spirituality? He says, you who are spiritual. If any of you is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore, restore such a one. Right, bear their burdens. Are you just craving that opportunity to where you can go be merciful to someone? I hope so, okay? So he says, do justly, be fair, love mercy, right? We're gonna get to this love mercy thing in a bit. Why do we, why do we wanna love mercy, okay? And walk humbly with your God. You can't help it. <laughs> when you know that God's been so merciful to, to you in spite of yourself, you can't help but be grateful. You can't help but be merciful. You can't help but be humble. What are you going to do? Go around and boast about your righteousness when you're so grateful that God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praises, right? <laughs> Think about that for a second. All right, so then we're going to go to skip forward to uh, Micah 7 down at verse uh, 18. Who is a God? Now watch, remember that theme of loving mercy, right? Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity? right? Who pardons in it. Not like uh, Ralph Fiennes did in uh, Schindler's List. You know, Schindler trying to convince him to save the lives of the Jews. He says, no, 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 the power is in pardon. Power is not in killing. Power is in pardon. So, you know, the drill sergeant or whatever he was, Ralph Fiennes is like, huh. So he tries it. He, you know, someone would uh, disobey him. He'd say, I pardon you. What was a prideful pardoning? And he couldn't maintain it. So Eventually, you just start killing them again. Uh, it's not that kind of pardoning. It's not boasting and pardoning. It's this beautiful pardoning that is birthed out of sheer love. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity? Now watch. And passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. Passes by. You know, it's like the angel passed over those people's homes who had what? The blood on their doorpost. God passes by. He, pass, he sees blood. He sees Jesus. That's all he sees when he looks at you. He's not looking at you. If he looked at you, we'd all just turn to dust and perish forever. No, right? Bible says, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? I think it's in Psalm 130. Who could stand? No, he passes by. He sees the blood. He passes by. It's, he says, he does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. So he says, he has shown you, O oh man, Micah 6a, what is good, what the Lord requires, to do justly, to love mercy. 
Well, why? Because God first delighted in mercy. God wasn't sitting there, oh, I guess I'll have mercy because I have to. No, he's like, man, I love you. I want to give you mercy. I delight in it. I am consumed with giving you mercy. And it's real, it's unadulterated mercy. It has no ulterior motives. It's just, I love giving you mercy because I want you to glorify me and see how beautiful and loving and holy and just I am. I am filled with justice. And he meted out justice on his beloved son. That's how much he delighted in mercy. To send his beloved son in your place so that you too would love mercy. It says he will turn again, he will, sub- he will have compassion on us and he will subdue our iniquities. He chased down your iniquities. Think about that for a second. He, ch- he will subdue them. He was chasing after them. I, I've got to go get them. I've got to get them. And notice what he does once he gets them. Watch what he does. And you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. I like to kind of joke around a little bit. Don't go scuba diving, right? <laughs> I've talked about that before. So many of us, we, we, we scuba dive. We dive in to get our own sins out. And if you're diving in, getting your own sins out of the sea where he's cast them, of course you're gonna dive in and get other people's sins out. You wanna go retrieve them? No, 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 no. He says, love mercy because God delights in mercy. He has subdued your iniquities and he cast them into the depths of the sea. They're gone. Don't go scuba diving. Don't dive into the sea. The sea is a dark place. It's a dark place of regret and shame. No, the Bible says whosoever believes in him will not be ashamed. It's a dark place of guilt and regret. The Bible says you're holy and blameless. Okay? You're filled with the righteousness of Christ. You're covered. You're blameless in his eyes. That's how he sees you in spite of yourself, in spite of myself. He says, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham. And Luke chapter one, verse 68 through 79 says that Jesus came to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. He's cast our sins into the depths of the sea because he delighted in mercy. And he simply says, I want you to love mercy like I love it. I love being, think about it. Are you loving having mercy? Next time someone just offends you, you know, and they come to you, they say, sorry, man, I've offended you. (laughs) What are you gonna do? I'm gonna, I pardon you. I pardon you like Ralph Fiennes. Are you gonna have that attitude of being merciful? I'm, I'm going to be merciful, you don't deserve it. No, 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 no. You say, man, I forgive you. Brother, I forgive you, sister. Whatever it is, I love it. I love mercy because God loved having mercy on me. Amen. There's mercy in Micah. God bless your day.